Today in this episode, we will continue the saga of this uh, old uh, second-hand uh, CNC router. Or I don't know the exact definition, so my huge second-hand, almost 20-year-old uh, uh, CNC whatever router. Now, what we will do today is actually a kind of basic stuff. So, I want to know how much hassle is to use a machine as is, with the old controller, with the old motors, with, with everything original. And uh, so for that I uh, loaded a very basic uh, uh, shape, what we will cut out with this uh, four millimeter uh, bit, yeah. Uh, on a really high RPM, I think uh, around uh, 20,000 RPM or something. So the depth of the cut is not more than five millimeters. So this is the, the thickness of the material. Uh, what is the material? I just find some garbage wood here in my uh, storages. And I place down there another uh, piece of garbage, what I exactly find in a container. So uh, I already did um, uh, a basic setup, so meaning uh, two positioning, zeroing, all, all these things I made already. Because one of uh, our kid is really crazy about, I'm sure you will recognize, <laughs> about Batman. So today we will uh, cut out this uh, Batman logo or Blackman <laughs> logo. Batman logo. Really basic stuff. So we, in total, I think it's about uh, 10 inch or 25 centimeter. The height is about uh, 150 millimeter. So let's say about eight inch or seven inch. If I'm right, I don't know. So DXF loaded into this software, which is uh, Care Type 2005 uh, Type Edit. So this was a really common software in the past for uh, kind of engravers, uh, CNC routers, uh, laser decor uh, machines and uh, plotters. So basically all the machines, they came with some kind of basic software and of course, uh, when you purchase the machine on a really high price, uh, they included the, the special uh, license of the software with uh, USB key or parallel uh, port uh, key or some kind of uh, protection. And in sometimes they built in the protection into the machine itself. Now, uh, in my case, everything is legal. And basically this is the core of the work process, how this big machine is working. Sorry, I cannot make um, a screen recorder because this is a really old uh, <laughs> uh, PC with a Pentium processor without video card and only just uh, two gigabyte of RAM. So here, basically, you can select other really basic machines like PowerCut. I know that machine, but of course, we got uh, the original uh, profile. Basically, this is the post uh, processor in this software. And yesterday I had a really big issue with this because somehow somebody, somewise, sometimes changed those parameters to some kind of really weird negative numbers. And whatever I did try to do on my machine, so I exported the file, it just uh, couldn't start it. It said like something position error. So what I did, I just replaced these really crazy numbers here with minus 100. <laughs> Make sure we, we are in some error zone or something. And here, but basically this is the, the, the main limitation of this machine. So this is 1.2 meter by 1.6 meter and it can uh, move the, the, the Z axis uh, in 100 millimeter. So the other negatives is just sometimes um, when you do an export from this software, 
it's making some kind of error is saying uh, the coordinate is not wrong on division by zero something minus zero one uh, uh, something something really crazy so I, f I figured out mm, this is the best settings for it okay now from here uh, you have to do uh, to check your tool settings and uh, the job what your tool will do so here it's 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 a very simple basically we said everything which is this color uh, this one it will a normal cut and uh, when you open this normal cut in this software now here where you can uh, adjust the magic okay so I said uh, we will cut six millimeter down in two steps okay and here we said we will go around not inside the line and I don't know what is this because it's Spanish and there is other more parameters and basically this one here is the overall precision of the the contour following of your vector mm. yesterday I find out if I put here one millimeter then it was really rough and if I put here uh, less than 10 uh, hundreds or one hundredths of millimeter then the machine just uh, don't want to start so I think this is the basic uh, settings here basically that's it and here we set the tool is a, a, a really simple cylindrical uh, uh, four millimeter bit and then you have to come here and now the software will generate the tool pad okay basically this is when this uh, creotype software will generate the real g code and soon i can show it to you okay so and here you again you can change some settings like uh, how far is the the bottom of the material and how you want to see this uh, mm, simulation and if you want to see the the outline of your vector or you just want to see the tool pad. so here it's everything correct so with the four millimeter tool this is approximately uh, how it uh, looks in a real life okay so uh, you just have to accept and here again there is a lot of uh, settings okay and here again I changed uh, some numbers so when you unlock this one you can change otherwise it's uh, locked and you cannot change so if I guess yesterday if I press this one it's meaning wherever I said the tool position like a zeroing position and this is what the machine will think this is uh, the limit of the job but now le le let me show you okay so if I hit this one again we get this uh, really crazy negative numbers yeah and everything is just going off the chart yeah <laughs> so I don't know what's going on here then you have to come here and save the job now let me show you I do, don't want to overwrite okay uh, so then this software will create something which is called uh, U2 U00 yeah? and then you will see real G code now this is what is coming out from the creatype type edit uh, software so this is a real g code Now this is the file what you have to import into the let's say a, a, an other kind of uh, post processor which will talk directly with the dsp processor you have uh, some kind of uh, machine parameters what you cannot change here nothing so basically what's happening here is uh, this software is made for many different type of machines uh, for this company which was the creation this was the, the original name so the creation Hong Kong I don't remember and basically this is the King Cut Cakes uh, 16 and uh, and here we can get some kind of information for the future when we want to replace the CNC controller so let me show you what I'm talking about okay so here we can see something hardware related okay 
the, the x-axis and the z-axis going only 5 mm per rotation, meanwhile the y-axis is going 10 mm per rotation, okay? So, but the pulse numbers are the same, okay? So, 200 pulse per rotation, it's a very, very old-fashioned <laughs> step per motor uh, speed or uh, uh, resolution. It's like uh, really old-fashioned, but this is our configuration now, and this is uh, what we will use in the future when we replace the control board, but we still want to use the old uh, stepper motors until we will get uh, our motors from the United States of America. So here in this software basically you cannot do nothing with the path or with the tool set or nothing, nothing, nothing. Now there is some kind of 3D modeling issue. The 3D it's a very very 3D. <laughs> Let me show you. So this is how they did the 3D visualization in 20 years ago. Eh? So, I don't know. It will not show you the starting point. It will not show you nothing. What you have to set up in the other software. Let me show you. So here, um, you have to go to vector edit mode and where you see this double dot, this is your starting position. If you have more vector in the same job, then you also have to define the, the which one is the first, which one is the second one. Let me show you. Come here and order the contours, okay? So, so this is the first tool path and this is the second one. And how you can change it is really weird. You have to click on one. Now it became one and then you have to press control and click on the other one. And now you get this on a second one. Let me show you something because yesterday this drive me crazy. Yeah. So even if I set here, this silhouette is the second one. When I came here to do this uh, visualization. So even we said this is the second one is doing this one like a first one. So I don't get it why this software is doing this. Basically this software is full with this kind of uh, errors and issues. It's, I think it's only a bug. Anyway, this is uh, a 20 year old uh, technology. We don't care it anymore. So what we have here, this is the final uh, cut. This is a very bad idea. Oh my God. So what I have to do now is to export the job from this software into the original uh, 100 megahertz very old DSP and it's a very simple task you just have to come here to the file and then say send it to the controller of course sometimes it doesn't see the controller so we will cut here six millimeter the the thickness of this material is five millimeter so we'll cut into the base material one millimeter but this is a sacrificing board so uh, nobody cares uh, everything is okay the edges it's very very nice very sharp it's almost new uh, in this case i don't need the, the coolant or the mist coolant but what i need is a uh, dust extraction and at the moment i don't have the dust uh, extraction because i was lazy today to bring this uh, heavy <laughs> dust extractor here and build all the pipes and drill the, the ceiling so in this case what i have here is my really trusty construction professional level uh, vacuum cleaner from the Wurt. it's actually a very good machine uh, with uh, many fancy functions, with uh, vacuum detection, with leaking detection, whatever, automatic uh, uh, filter cleaning, whatever. Very powerful unit, I really like it. Basically, this machine with us since, I don't know, maybe five, six or seven years on construction fields and it's just going, 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 going. So I'm 100% sure this can manage the amount of dust on 20,000 RPM and so I don't think so this will be a really heavy chip load even I don't think so even I need the vacuum cleaner I think we will go 
around uh, 20,000 RPM, which is somewhere here, yeah, uh, because the full is 24,000, so I guess this is like a 20,000. Let me show you the process, uh, how to load the job. So here is your uh, Blackman <laughs> tool, so now I have to press uh, enter, okay. Okay, so now it's loading the file, and you see already the, the relative uh, position is incorrect. Previously, I adjusted the zero position into the position library. So uh, this is this button, and here you can see there is uh, some relative positions, and I saved it to the zero. So let me load the zero, and if everything right, we have to see here zero, zero, and ten. So what is this ten? Now this is the the tool height for the transfers between cutting jobs, and this is the tool height for start the job. This you can set up in both of the software. Everything is right, everything is set. So the tool is in a good position, 10 millimeter from the surface, and if everything is right, you now we can start the cut. So how you start the cut? You just have to press this button, and if everything good, the system will spin up the spindle, and then after one to three seconds, how much you set again in the software, will start to do the job. So in any case of working on your board, or your own job, or your material, or change your tool, or check your tool, whatever, you can press the pause function, and then the machine will lift up, and will uh, you can work on your part, and then when you finish your manual work on your part, you just have to press again, and then everything will continue from the last uh, finished G code line. Or I think it's going back like uh, three or four lines. I don't remember. It's probably some setting somewhere, somewhere. Okay, so let me uh, start the job, enter. So it's spinning up, and it's already start the cut. Very nice. And basically, we are going, yeah? Now, we will pause for a second. So this is what's happening when you press the pause. Now is the time to knock, uh, I don't know, one or two nail to here, okay? Make sure this uh, part will not fly away. But make sure it's not touching my tool, even if my tool is moving here or touching the, the spindle or whatever. Yeah, I know professional people has a, a nail gun, yeah, and just come in and tch, tch, do to touch or other professional people has uh, double-sided uh, <laughs> tapes. Now our middle part is secured and this is what we want to take out, so not the outside part. And now I just have to press again this play and everything is follow the, and everything going back. I should be. Oh, I just hit uh, my gorgeous vacuum cleaner. I think uh, that's it, it's enough. So, here is uh, the end results, yeah. So, uh, tears and worse, nye. you know, I have no clue about the moisture content of this uh, board, what I find in a garbage. Maybe this is not the correct uh, bit for this uh, material. Nail number one, and nail number two. This you have to define in a software too, okay? Uh, here is my Batman logo today, and uh, let me check the quality of the cut. Mm, so, nothing burnt, really smooth, so I think this uh, one hundredth of millimeter of precision I think is good enough, and here you can see the, the tears, 
which looks like uh, it's coming from the material itself, not from the tool. Because, uh, yeah, uh, this is a, a grain of the top. Yeah, exactly. So the grain here is going in this direction. So when the float uh, cutting like this, it's uh, of course because it's a really shitty, <laughs> cheap material. Nothing wrong with it. So, uh, but the bottom, it's super nice. Yeah, super sharp. So it is the sacrifice board, and I said uh, to the machine to cut only one millimeter extra. So of course the final uh, surface of your sacrifice board is depend on the quality of your board. I think uh, this had uh, like a little bow like this, or like this, but we can check this one too. Uh, we have here our super expensive eight euro Chinese caliper. And we just drop it here. And I say to make one millimeter extra cut. And it's saying a little bit less here. Let me check the other one. Make sure we don't have so much uh, chips and dust in it. It's a half millimeter. And what's going on here? Uh, yeah, this one. It's again the same number. So, of course, in other kind of job or other kind of operation, this is a really important uh, <laughs> thing, so, uh, but definitely not with uh, some uh, board from the, the garbage, yeah? It was a hassle, actually not really. So the machine is almost hassle free as is. So what was the real hassle is this two software. Mm, yeah, this is definitely something 20 year old technology. Final conclusion, everything is fine with the machine. I don't see here any problem with the positioning or uh, any problem mechanically. So all the axles, all the motors are working really fine and dandy. By the way, Joseph was here on Friday. So now Joseph is here, the, <laughs> the original owner of the machine because now he will teach me how we used in a past, yeah? So this is the materials what he used before. He explained to me which one is for what. Basically now we are imitating what Joseph did for years, yeah? How many years? <laughs> 20 years. 20 years! He used this machine for 20 years. He brought me something more, yeah? Something more nice thing is. The almost all original catalog and paper, so this was the software. This is the guy, Pedro. And this is the other company where he bought the machine itself and all the toolings for the machines. I think I will upload all the files and everything what I have because I saw in many forums uh, people are looking for basic configuration files, uh, the, the basic firmware files for this machine exactly. So I think uh, I will upload everything what I have in my hand. Very good news, I got the original English user mm -hmm. manual, which is super rare on the internet. People are hunting for this, I'm not joking. Uh, I forgot to tell you guys, but he also gave me this uh, nice uh, Chinese plotter yeah. to use uh, together with the CNC. Uh, this one is also renovated a little bit. Okay, so you select the point. And you, you select the point, and, and then you, you press this so. one, the, where is this flaggy thingy, okay? Hopefully, uh, fortunately, this software is in English, yeah? <laughs> so this I can figure out a little bit later. So basically, he said he, he didn't cut the tape. Uh, one of his employees yes. uh, did this, uh, cut not him for my first year. I think I will use something <laughs> <laughs> more thicker. But uh, look, everything we, we cleaned. Uh, completely, uh, new. completely new. Completely new, completely nice, huh? Eh? Clean, huh? Eh? Mm -hmm. So that's what we did with your uh, machine. And he gave me a lot of uh, extra materials what he used in the past uh, to try the machine. And uh, we got also <laughs> the vacuum table replacement materials. Nobody is producing this uh, vacuum table. You have to produce for yourself. And Joseph gave me the three original file. Let me show you. So the planner Ando will do the surface flat and then you have the the hose which is the taladra 
And then you have the other program, which is the, not Batman, uh, Lamado, and this is this uh, plunge uh, cut in a material. So what is this material? <laughs> uh, he was super smart, I think. He bought this uh, sandwich panel, which is some kind of polyethylene, urethane, whatever, whatever, polyurethane type of something sandwich material. So basically, this is like a, a two a white sandwich, yeah? And between the two sandwich, there is this gray, uh, almost gummy caoutchouc feeling, almost like something like a foamy, but not foamy, it's really hard. And he gave me the name card of the guy where he, he got all these uh, materials. So, you know, next week, I will visit this uh, other guy and we will go into his shop and we will buy a big uh, uh, plate from this because unfortunately this is not enough for my uh, replacement. And it's about two and a half hour. <laughs> yes, you heard right. Plus one day for the contact glue to cure to the aluminum. So it's about one and a half day of uh, operation then I will get a completely new uh, vacuum uh, table, whatever mm, it's the name of this, yeah? So, by the way, never do like this with your machine, okay? Don't, don't put ever, never, nothing on your table. This is really unprofessional if the machine is still running, yeah? Let me solve this issue. So basically, we are done for today. I'm, I'm really happy with the results. Everything is uh, good and nice with this machine. Mm, everything is working. Uh, I'm not saying this was not a hassle. So basic CNC preparation operations are exactly the same. Even I have a feeling this machine is almost hassle free because in the past this was sold like a, a Gravier a huge business machine. Uh, like a sign, so making uh, business signs and uh, you know advertisements on a door of your uh, office entrances or whatever. So make sure this kind of designer guys and uh, graphical guys can use the machine as is. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Bye. Let me tell you what's happened yesterday. This Zoom recorder just stopped to record, okay? Just stopped. Uh, it was not an issue of the battery. It was lobbed with the hold, yeah, position. So whatever you are doing, yeah, it's hold. So yesterday it just stopped to record. And I realized this one, after one and a half hour of uh, shooting a video, okay, so, then I tried to use the iPhone audio for video editing and let me tell you guys, this is like a super low quality, really, I don't know. Uh, yesterday by mistake I shuttered everything on 4K 60p and you can imagine the, <laughs> the quality of the footage, it was horrible, I don't know Apple what did with this uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max uh, Extra Ultra, I don't know what's the name of this uh, phone. It was a catastrophe, so today I had to shoot again everything. It's still on, so I don't know what happened yesterday, really, I have no clue. But uh, I always use the Tascam products, or Sony products, or Sennheiser products, I never had this issue with any of them. So I think in the future I will drop this zoom recorder too and I don't know what I will do. Maybe I will go back to Sony A7 with the Sony uh, microphones and um, Tascam uh, field recorder. Eh? Yeah. And stop.
I take my tool back, please, please, no, no, just give it to me.